<laughs> hey, y'all. Good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. Uh, we're continuing our series, uh, Me and My Big Mouth. We're talking about taming the tongue. We're in James and a few other places. If you want to turn to the book of James this morning, um, it's way back in the back of your Bible. It's just a few pages there, um, and we'll jump into that in a few minutes. Uh, Garrett there on the announcement, he already looked tired. He filmed that before the baby was born, but he, he already looked tired. Uh, they had a beautiful baby girl born um, thir- Thursday? Thursday, is that right? Um, and uh, they're doing well and uh, excited for them. They're already home, um, doing great. So I don't know why he's not here this morning. Um, <laughs> just selfish, right? Um, no, y'all be praying for them. Um, so thankful that we have so many talented people to, to lead us in worship. And that's really, that's really what happens here. It was, it was really cool this morning. And it doesn't always happen, but sometimes the song's a little softer. I can hear y'all singing, and I could just really hear y'all singing this morning. It was really, you, you guys are good. Y'all are really good. So it was uh, fed, fed my spirit. Don't ever think that, um, that when, you know, that coming to church is, is just about you. I mean, it really is about the people that you're sitting beside. I mean, you know, we're, we're called family of God or the body of Christ in the Bible. And, um, and it really makes a difference. It makes a difference for me. And I know it does for you for one another to who you see and, and the voices you hear and the, the hugs you get. And, and all of that goes into um, to really um, encouraging us and to helping us us to see that God is bigger than just our experience. You know, the voices that are singing back, you know, break every chain. There's all kinds of chains that have been broken. There's chains that are needing to be broken, you know, all around this room. And people are crying out as they sing that song. They're crying out in praise or they're crying out in need. And, uh, and that's from all of these different experiences around the room. And uh, God is big enough to reach into each life and to work in those lives. And so it just makes God that much bigger for me. And so thank you for the way that you sing and the way that you worship. Um, let's, uh, let's jump into James. We're, um, we're talking about uh, taming the tongue or, or talking about our speech and how our speech is important, how it gets us into trouble. And, you know, we've got these, these funny videos we picked up from another church um, that, are, uh, that are really good because it just doesn't take long, right, for one little interaction to become something big, right? I mean, you just walk in, maybe you just got an innocent question, and all of a sudden it becomes something blah, 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 right? Um, you know, you just go in and you say, hey, is that new? Like there's something in your house, and you go, is that new? And all of a sudden, why are you always complaining about anything I bring in that, you know, I spend money, and no, 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 you know. It's like all of a sudden, is, is that new? Is that new? And it becomes this big thing. Maybe, maybe nothing like that has ever, it doesn't happen in my house. I'm just, I heard about it happening in other people's house. But, but, but maybe for you, have you ever asked somebody something or you said something to somebody and their reaction seems way out of line, like way disproportionate, like, like, all right, I'm not sure we're in the same conversation. There's something else going on here. Most of the time there is something else going on when something like that happens. Um, and you know that because you've done the same thing to other people, haven't you? I mean, like somebody just asks you a question about something going on or they, uh, they make a comment about something and all of a sudden you just react out of, all this stuff that's been happening in your life, right? You react not based on what they just said or not based on the person in front of you, but you react based on what happened at work over the last week, what happened at school over the last year, what happened you know, in, in all your relationships or what's happening with your car, what's happening with your finances. And somebody says something and all of a sudden they get all of that, right? And it, it won't say anything about all that. You just talk about how they're insensitive or how they don't care or, you know, whatever it is. You lash out at that person. Your words come out. And all of a sudden, there is what was, we thought was just a regular interaction with people. It was all of a sudden this huge, big thing. And I do that from time to time. I'm guilty of that as well. Like I, right now, like if you just mention anything about air conditioning to me, my reaction is going to be disproportionate to what it should be. I'm going to, you know, like, do you, not everybody knows, but you know, we've, we've got two church facilities, right? We've got the Eastern Heights here and then in North Columbus, got Mount Zion. I had great services there this morning. It was really awesome. I want you guys to be praying for each other. Um, you know, just, just really be thinking about what's going on at the, at the different places and all God's doing, seeing new people come in in both places and God's doing good stuff. But they're both old 
big church buildings with lots of air conditioners. Now, we're thankful for the gift of air conditioning, right? When it works, right? Now, um, if you ask me how many air conditioner units there are between the two buildings, there's no way I can tell you. I just don't know. I have no clue. I mean, I, I guess we'd go around at some point and count them up, but I got no idea. And it seems like, especially this time of year, you know, you, one breaks, you fix it, and then you got another one. And all these things cost money, and, you know, it's just aggravation. And it's just one more person goes, hey, I don't think the air's working right in A, B, C, D part of the building. I just want to go... Ah, you know, it's not that I don't love you, but right now I just want to throw you out there. Don't say anything about air conditioner, right? Um, but that, that has nothing to do with that person. So I might, I might, you know, go, thank you, you know, all right? And, and they're going, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with that guy, right? Uh, you know, there's something else going on there. And we talked about that last week, trying to understand what's going on with somebody else. You know, that great advice that James gave, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, be quick to listen, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, right? It's great advice. It's really, really good advice. That quick to listen part, the quick part just means make that first. Make that your first thing to do. You're right. Try and be a listening person. Ask questions so you can understand where the other person's coming from. You slow down on getting your point of view in or slow down on explaining yourself, trying to understand them. And then you will be slower to become angry, right? And so you just kind of, so if y'all, if y'all see me a little, you know, hot, about air conditioners, y'all just give me a little grace, you know, just, just try and understand where I'm coming from. But really, that, it, how many conflicts, how many blow-ups, how many, how many interactions that should have been really nothing become these huge things because we don't slow down to listen to the other person, try and understand where they're coming from. We get insecure, we get prideful, whatever it is, and these interactions that should be just ho-hum, nothing to it, become something that really become very dangerous for us and hurtful and break relationships. And so let's go to James chapter 3, and we'll get some really good instruction. And once again, I just want to remind you, if you're one of those people that has never really read the Bible for yourself, and you think, I tried to read it, it's confusing, it's not, it, I don't understand what it says for me in my life today, the book of James is a great place to read if you're very practical-minded, because James is going to I just, just spell it out for you, he's going to give you really good advice, going to give you really good instruction, like that. Like what we just said, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become. That's just great advice. This is great advice for every part of life. All right? And so there's a lot of good stuff like that in here. So let's begin. Chapter 3, verse 1 says this. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Now here's James. He's, he's going to go ahead and say, all right, I know that I've got a lot of accountability, a lot of responsibility on me. And I think partly it's kind of, it's kind of confessional uh, in this. And he's, he's saying, you know, when we who talk a lot, it's important what we say. It's important that we try and say it right. And there is, uh, there's some real responsibility that we should feel when we're getting up and trying to communicate God's word and, and speak to people the truth of God and the good news of Jesus Christ. And he says, um, so he says, just be careful when you get up and you start talking and, you know, saying, well, I'll instruct you, right? I'll tell everybody the way it should go. Just careful, careful. And I feel the way to that. Um, I really do. Um, and I know that, uh, that I've got such a long way to go and learning the Bible and communication and, you know, I just, I want to get better and try not to get lazy about it, just trying to, you know, because sometimes I can. I, can get, you know, I, I learned a lot of stuff back then and I can just, I can just keep giving that, but I need to keep going to the Word and, and, and having that accountability and, that, and feeling that responsibility. And he says, you know, because we all stumble in many ways and anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Basically, he's saying the hardest thing in the world to do is just to keep a tight rein on your tongue, make everything you say right, right? If you, can, if you can control that part of your life, you probably got the rest of it nailed, right? You got the rest of it perfect. He says, um, anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect, they're able to keep their whole body in check. Now, as much as I talk, right? And I talk a lot, right? Every, every week up here talking, there's other occasions to talk, um, weddings, funerals, you know, other special occasions, whatever it is. Um, used to, the church I served for a lot of years, I had to preach a sermon on Sunday morning, sermon on Sunday night, a sermon on Wednesday night, and then all these other things. And so there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of words, right? It's just a lot of words. And so there are a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities for me to mess up, 
right? A lot of opportunities for you or whoever's listening to hear me say something that maybe I didn't intend to say, right? Or maybe because of your day or because of your perspective, you heard something. I was intending it this way, but you heard it this way. And so there was lots and lots, and there is lots and lots still today, to right, right now, there's lots of opportunities for you to be offended or for someone to be offended by what I say. And, and I, try and, I try and tell people that on a regular basis. You know, if, if over the course of time, as much as I talk, as much as I'm, you know, in front of you, I'm going to say something that you're going to disagree with, right? There's going to be something. It may be theological. You may be going, I don't know that I read that passage of Scripture that way. Maybe I disagree with Pastor Matt on that. It may be, you know, I, I, sometimes I share my opinions, and, and you may go, well, I don't think that opinion is right. You know, I got a different opinion on that. Um, Try not to share too many just opinions or try and or at least give you, you know, my background and where I'm trying to get it from the Word of God. Um, but I do share opinions, and so you go, I don't disagree with that. That's offensive to me or whatever. And sometimes it's just the way I say something, right? I'll say the way I say something just comes off wrong or too harsh or, or like I'm not serious enough about it or I make a joke and you laugh a little bit, and so I push it a little bit harder, right? You know, I'm susceptible to those kind of things. And so there are all these occasions, all these opportunities for offense. And so over the course of time, at some point, I am almost certain that I will offend you or say something that you disagree with. And I just want to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. And I don't mean to when it happens in the future. All right. Now there'll be something, some things about the gospel, some things about God's word that will be offensive to you. They will come against your lifestyle, your attitudes, your sin. And it, same for me. I just read the Bible, and sometimes I'm offended because of the truth of God's word as, as it hits me where I am. And that's a that's a good offense. But I don't want to offend you for no reason, right? I don't want to just push your buttons for no reason. I I love you. I want to I want to pastor and shepherd you, and and so that's my goal and my teaching is to is to help you see in God. God's word, how you can just love Jesus more, right? I'm not even trying to so much teach you, you know, some truth. I just, through preaching through this time, I just, the outcome I hope for is that you love Jesus more, right? This, I consider preaching worship, okay? It's part of our worship. And so what I want is for you to love Jesus more through this. And so sometimes if I offend you when that happens, I'm sorry. That's not my intention. Um, but I have offended people over the years. And what, usually the way it'll come back to me is somebody will say, you really should go and talk with Robert, right? You really need to go talk to Robert. I'm like, what about? Just, you just need to go talk to him. Like, what, what's it about? Just, just trust me. You need to, you need to give him a call or you need to go talk to him. I'm like, what, what are we, what are we saying here? And right, so they know whatever it is that I did or said to Robert, right? It's, it's, it's a secret only to me, right? <laughs> they, they won't tell me. I just can't tell you. I, you know, but you should just go. And a lot of times if you go to the person, you go to Robert, and Robert goes, yeah, whatever. You know, you know. Because um, when we get face-to-face, -face, right, it's, uh, it's tough for us to say some of the things that we say when we're away from somebody else. And um, so if I, do, if I do ever offend you or hurt your feelings or you, you think I said something, you know, wrong or, or whatever, talk to me. Um, you know, email me, my, uh, mad at fortchurch.org. Um, if you ask me, I will give you my cell phone number. Um, you know, you can call me, um, just grab me. Don't yell at me like in front of a lot of people. I might get defensive, right? Like I just, I'm sorry, I'm human, but you know, I'll try not to, but you know, just, um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about it. I, mean, I really don't want you um, to be offended because of something I've said wrong or I've said poorly. And so I know that those things can happen. And so just hearing James, the brother of Jesus, the leader of the early church saying, we who teach need to take it seriously. Um, none of us get it right. We all stumble. And so if, if I think, I feel like that's what he's acknowledging here, I think I better acknowledge it too. All right, and so I just wanted to do that for you. Um, I love you, and I understand that I, I mess up. I make a lot of mistakes, and so um, y'all um, be graceful when you can, you know, for me, and then if you need to talk about something, let's talk about it, you know? So, all right, and so he goes on here, all right, in verse three, 
And he gives these really great metaphors, these really uh, wonderful pictures to help us understand how powerful our speech, how powerful our, um, the words that we say are. He says this, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Any of you ride horses? Any horse people? Okay, we got a few horse people in here. All right. I've never ridden a horse ever in my whole life. And at this point, I think we're just going to, we're just going to go with that, right? I think, and I think I've gone this long and it, and I really don't feel like it would be fair to do it to the horse. So it would be, um, would be some kind of animal cruelty thing. So, uh, but I, I do think it's amazing. You watch people who are, you know, skilled horses are a well-trained horse and just a little bit of pressure this way or that way. And the horse turns and goes. And, uh, some people are even so good that, you know, they, the, the, you know, watch that thing where they make the horses dance, a little pressure with their legs. You know, they, they make them do this thing and that thing's absolutely incredible. You're talking about thousand pound animal and just a little bit of pressure makes them go this way or that way. It's, it's absolutely amazing. All right, now, so keep that picture in mind. Something small controls something huge, controls something big, has a great impact on something big, all right? Um, And then he gives you another picture like that. He says, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants them to go. So you can have a big ship, great big ship, it only takes a little rudder in the back just to, just a little turn of the wheel, a few degrees, and you're going to change the course of that ship and the direction and the outcome where that ship is going in the end. So once again, you have a very small thing that has a great impact on a, on a large scale and is going to impact the direction and the outcome of the situation. All right? And so then he gives one more picture. And uh, well, let me break in real quick right there. Yesterday, I uh, went fishing with uh, the men from the church. We had our breakfast. Instead of going to, you know, just having breakfast here, we went to Lee County Lake. And um, a lot of fun. The fish weren't biting very good. But I was sure, like I saw this fish on the stump right up, just, just right there where that first pew is. And, and it was kept swelling there. I could tell there's a fish right there. And there was a line with a cork wrapped around it. I thought that somebody broke off. There's a fish on that line, and it broke off. And, and I said, Russ, go get it. Go get it. And Russ, he's trying to hook it with his line. I said, just go get it. Just go get it. Well, I said, just go get it enough times that I thought, all right, I got to go get it, right? You know, like, I, don't be a sissy. Just go get it, right? So I said it enough times that I got to, you know, if you're going to, you can talk. Sometimes you got to act, right? So I got my flip flops on. I took my phone, wallowed out, and I go down there, and and it's it's not deep at all um, from the water to where the mud is. <laughs> the mud though goes down a whole lot deeper. So had a little struggle. John Newman had to stick his tennis shoe in the water and help me get out. And I, I lost my flip flop a couple of times down in the mud and it reached down there and dig my flip flop out and, and there was no fish on the line. All right. <laughs> and I'd, and I'd have bet you money. There was, I would have absolutely bet you money. All right. So, um, that's all free. Doesn't have anything to do with this. Other than, you know, just watch what you say. Don't be telling you, your kid, you know, go do this, go do this. All right. Um, so, uh, so here's our next picture. So we got the horse, right? We've got the ship. And now here. Um, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts, right? There's things we say about our lives and who we are and what we're going to do that have great impact on our lives. Small thing has huge impact, affects the direction, the course of our lives. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. I'm telling you, James is just going to tell you, right? He's, he's giving you these cool word pictures. He's a little confessional. He gives you these cool word pictures, something small, control something big. And he goes, but let me just tell you, your tongue is more, is more impactful. It will have a greater effect on your life than even these other things, right? It is like a spark that sets a whole forest on fire. He, he's 
you know, you got to preach this. You can't just read it. I mean, it's got to, it's, you got to understand. He said, it will set your life on fire. It is a restless evil set on fire by hell. And you may be thinking, not me, but have you? Have you set fires in your life with something you said? Have you set fires in your relationships? Set fires in your workplace because of something you said or somebody else has said to you and the way you reacted, right? It just takes a little thing at the right moment and, and, to, and if you in the right mood and, and under the right circumstances for that little spark to catch wind and gain some fuel and begin to burn down everything around you. I know, I know too many people who no longer talk to their siblings. Too many people whose, you know, relationships for years have been broken with their parents or with their children. And they don't even speak anymore because they had one conversation that was so nasty that now they feel like there's no coming back from it. And it's a sad, sad, sad thing that some of the people that should be the most important in their lives now are people that they have no interaction with. A small spark can set the direction in the course of your life. Some boasts that we make, and we're so prideful or insecure, we make some boasts and, and we feel like we can't ever come back from them, right? We can't ever walk back from that thing. I said I was gonna do this and I'll do it with, you know, even if it means I gotta leave everybody else behind and do it and leave everybody else behind. Um, he says it's all kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. Once again, it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. James is trying to scare you. He is trying, he's trying to help me understand how serious this is. He's not mixing words, right? He, is, he wants us to know that what we say will have real impact on our lives and on the people's lives around us, on our relationships. It is real, it is serious, it is impactful. Let me ask you this, any of you, do you feel like the direction of your life, who you are now, is shaped in part by something somebody else said to you or about you in your past? Maybe there's a memory of some parent or teacher or somebody said something to you and you can, you can hear their voice, you can picture them as they're saying it and they said something like, you're stupid or you're ugly or in some cases some really awful things that parents can say to children, like, I wish you weren't here. And it impacted you and has an impact on you now, right? it affects how you feel about yourself. You feel like, you know, I'll never achieve certain things. I can only go this far. Relationships, I'll never have good, healthy relationships because of what people know about my past and, and they've said this about me and that's just who I am at this point. And, and I'll just never be different. And, and I just wanna go back, you know, Jesus can break every one of those chains. Um, but yeah, I mean, can you identify with that? I got a few of those in my past. People said something, and like as a child, and it still, still affects me. It still affects who I think I am and makes me insecure about certain things. I'm like, I'm a grown man, you know? I'm worrying about what somebody said to me when I was six. But it does. It does. It is a restless evil. It is full of deadly poison. It is set on fire by hell. James wants you to understand, in case you didn't already know, that what you say has weight, has power, and can change the course and direction of your life. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings 
James is going to get to our hypocrisy real clearly, us who call ourselves Christians and worship God. He says, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. And there's a lot that comes along with that, right? There's a lot that comes along with that, that made in God's likeness, his special creation, different than, than all the other animals. They're made in his creation, and he loves them. He says they are very good, right? He wants a relationship with them. He sent Jesus to die for their sins so he could have a relationship with them. And we now, we either in their presence say things so hurtful or even away from them we say things about other people that we would that maybe we wouldn't say in their presence that are hurtful that tear them down and James just goes nah he says no he says out of the same mouth come praise and cursing brothers and sisters this should not be he's like I always hate it when people say duh, but this is a duh moment, right? You praise God. You sing praises to God. You lift your hands and you praise him for his goodness and his love and his mercy. And you thank him for his love and his mercy towards you, which you know you didn't deserve, right? You knew you were messy and messed up, but God still came to you through the love of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, and raised you up to new life. And you know all of that and you sing his praises. And now you look at other people as if they are unsavable, unworthy not worthy of your mercy, not worthy of your grace. They are only, only worthy of your correction and your rebuke and you to criticize them. And aren't we thankful God didn't treat us that way? And so that's just what James is saying. Hey, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't praise God and all of who he is and his actions towards us and his love and his mercy and then turn around and curse those who are made in his image, ones that he loves in the same way that he loved you. This cannot be, he says. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt produce fresh water. Here he's saying, now, what comes out of you, out of your mouth, is what is in you. What comes out of your mouth is what is in you. Fig trees bear figs. Fresh water doesn't come from salt water, right? What's in you comes out of you. Stump your toe. What's in you comes out of you, right? In the moments of pressure, in the moments of stress, what's in you comes out of you. And sometimes what comes out of me, I am not proud of. So I know there are parts of me that need, still need, Jesus, to sanctify and remake and mold and shape those things. I'm thankful that he isn't giving up on me. I'm thankful that he keeps working on me. I want to give you just a few things to think about as we, as we think about the, the taming of the tongue. It is out of the overflow of the heart what comes out of us. And so, so what, what do we do then? We need to feed into our heart what is good, the attitude of God, right? That attitude of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. A gentle answer. Jesus going to the cross and being, being cursed, but not cursing back. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? It comes from being with him. I know I keep going back to it over and over again. I'm not lying. Be in the word. God has spoken to you through his word. Time spent in the word will shape your heart and it will begin to be what bubbles out, flows out of your heart. Got the reading plan down there in the Welcome Center. You can do that or jump in, start reading James this week. Get a, get a reading plan. but just And then begin to ask God, all right, God, Show me, show me what you want me to know. Show me how you want me to change. Tell me what you're trying to, you remember we talked about the Holy Spirit in us. He's, he's going to help you through it. I understand that sometimes it's our pride and our desire to, to lift ourselves up that we say things um, sometimes that are hurtful to others so that we can make ourselves appear better. 
things that we've done in the past in that way that have, um, have hurt other people and had an impact on their lives. Um, I think it's important for us to remember that there are, there are in some of these insignificant, unimportant interactions that we have that we think they're insignificant and unimportant, throwaway conversations. Some of them, probably a lot more than we think, have eternal value. How many times somebody says, Pastor Matt, I, I remember that sermon you preached. I remember you said that and you, you used that scripture, you told that story. And that was such an impact on me. It's made such an impact on the direction of my life. And I, think, I say, thank you. I'm so glad. You know, God, usually I say, God gives us what we need, you know. And then in my mind, I go, I have no idea what they're talking about. I can't remember. I can't remember that story, that sermon, that day. I got an email this week. I won't give too many details, but um, it was an email, it was a long email from someone who had been here in the church and, um, and she was talking about you know good things that happened in the church, but then um, then she had uh, was in an abusive relationship and things got very bad. And she talked about some meetings that we had had. And I'm reading through the email. I'm going, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Um, you know, just as always a reminder for us as a church, you know, we, we talk about um, one of the values that we remind ourselves over and over again is diversity. And when we talk about diversity, we're not talking about just white and black, all right? We're talking about don't look past somebody who's different than you. Don't look past somebody who's in a different situation than you. Um, and there are people all around us that we might look over or look past because they're, they don't look like somebody that would go to our church. They don't look like somebody who would be in our family, whatever. Um, and so we try and make a point to that because we know there are people all around us in need. All around us. And if you don't look past anybody, there's going to be a lot of people that you come in contact with who have big needs big needs, messy lives, right? And if you get involved with them, you could get messy, right? Um, but we always want to push that as a value because that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't avoid those who are messy, right? And so this person with their messy life, and I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the conversation. She talked about this interaction we had, and then this awful abusive story and then she begins to start turning the story around and talk about how she got out and got help and got into a program and now she's relocated and she's doing so much better and really cool and she's just so thankful to God and thankful for this conversation that we had and she, she was talking about the look on my face during the conversation and I couldn't I just couldn't remember it and then thank God at the bottom at the bottom she put two pictures one was hard to look at um, but the other one was her smiling. And, I, oh, I know who that is. And they, all of it came flooding back in that moment. Like all of that, all those conversations and all of that came flooding. I was so thankful because I wasn't getting it from the name of the picture. There are all the time moments conversations, interactions that you are having that you do not understand the eternal weight of them. People are going through stuff you just have no idea. And you don't have any idea how a kind word, a hug, an invitation to church is going to impact the rest of somebody's life. Father, um, James, through your Holy Spirit, did a perfect job of helping us feel the weight of our words. So much to be convicted of and to remind us of the ways that we fall short. But God, I, I pray that there's also an encouragement for people in this room because I know there are people all around this room that have had people speak life into them and it was it was so powerful. 
And I know that there are opportunities today and tomorrow and the weeks to come for these people to speak life into others, to say the name of Jesus before people who need it and it will change their eternity. God, I also know that there are people in this room who are still bound up with something that was said to them a long time ago that still affects who they think they are, how they view themselves. Would you break the chain of that? Because although words are powerful, your word is more powerful. It can redeem everything from our past. Thank you for Jesus who did that redeeming work. You know, one more thing I just asked this morning that I know there are people in this room who, um, who understand that they said things in the past that have hurt others, maybe even broke relationships in their lives. God, would you help us to have the faith and the conviction and the will to do what needs to be done, if that's to go and to ask forgiveness. It can be such a hard thing to do. But God, show us that there is redemption on the other side of it. It's freedom on the other side of it. Help us in that. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, um, if, you need, if you need to come to Jesus, if you need to give him your life today, He's, he's offered you eternal life and relationship with him. He paid the price for your sins on the cross. God raised him from the dead to demonstrate that you can have new life. The invitation is for you. Give your life to Jesus today. You can mark it on a card. I'll be down here if you want to come and talk to me about it. See me after church. Maybe it's time for you to step up and to be baptized. Is that your next step? Maybe it's time for you to get into the word for yourself. The reading plans are downstairs. What is the next step for you? What does God have in store? Maybe it's to begin to reach down and to help somebody else in need. You begin to see other people, the value that they have. Maybe your next step is to begin serving in the church. Maybe you take the step of serving in kids camp, whatever. What's the next step for you? What, God, what is God doing in your life? Because God wants to, as he speaks to you through his word, he wants to speak into your life and see things happen in your life and you grow to be more like Jesus. What's the next step for you? For all of us, there is. For all of us there next steps. What is it for you? As we stand and sing, you be praying and asking God, what are your next steps? We're going to give our offering during this time. And so let's, uh, let's pray for that. Father, thank you for being here with us today. God, I pray that in these, um, in these moments as we give, that you would give joy to your people as they give back to you. God, thank you for the way that you provide for us. We are so grateful. In Jesus' name.